Say that again. <laughs> This is about making a difference, and that's the message we want to get across. Like I say, I don't think he was struggling, I don't think anything like that at all. I think it's very easy in the farming community to get, to, to get down. I think it's fair to say he lived life to the full. Um, but underneath, probably, he was a bit of a warrior as well, um, in that he didn't like anything going wrong in his life, or he didn't like anyone being upset or anyone else having difficulties. Um, but everybody's overriding memory of him is his smile. If it weren't every day or every other day, there was a phone call to him. You know, he had asked me how my day's been, what, you know, how his day was. Um, yeah, just in contact every day and then even the evenings like if he wasn't here he was probably at hours he, he'd come round we'd have tea you know he'd sit on the sofa have a beer we, we used to watch top gear we watched all the episodes of top gear together well it's just a, a jolly person wasn't he i'd see him you know down the pub quite a bit and stuff like that and uh, in, in markets and stuff like that and it's just it's just a great boat to be around wasn't he really very very much an outdoor person um Loved the farm from day one, but loved all sorts of other activities. I can remember when I was 16 and I used to do work around and around his farm and I don't know how, what age Leonard would have been, but he come riding into the field on his bike. He had like a, I don't know if it was a BMX bike or something like that. I was mowing the field and he was riding up and down the, down the, uh, down the rows and Obviously, as a young lad, I suppose, you know, he's pulling wheelers and doing this, that and the other, like, just showing off to me, and I was just, like, laughing in my tractor, but anyway, he pulled this one wheelie, but he must have caught a bit of my mowing grass, and it went round his chain. Of course, it jammed his back wheel up, and he went straight flying over the handlebars, <laughs> and then I was just laughing at myself, because then he had the bike upside down, and he was yanking this grass out, like, you know, getting really angry with it, and he couldn't get it out, and in the end, he put the bike on his shoulder and walked back home with his bike. <laughs> Um, he was good at school, he had a good brain on him. I wouldn't say he loved school, he got through it and he got what he wanted out of it. He knew quite early on where he wanted to go, which was Harper. In his last year of uni, he had an online lecture. He thought, oh, I need a coffee. So he put his laptop down and went in the kitchen to get coffee and suddenly was aware that his name was being called by the lecture for the second or third time. So he walked back in, just about basically grasped what the question was asked and, said, and said, came out with an answer. And the lecturer said, that's as near perfect answer as you could possibly do in that scenario. So his friends suddenly contacted him and said, how the heck did you do that? Because you obviously weren't in the room. <laughs> in his younger days, he also um, decided from the age of about eight, I think, seven or eight, he wanted to be, wanted to drum, learn to drum. He used to drive me mad because he went around the whole house tapping everything. Um, but he did, he ended up with lessons and he, he um, drummed right through till A-levels really, when he was concentrating on getting to Harper. New Year's Eve, he went out with a lovely girl. They had a fantastic night. Um, being a parent, I saw the headlights come home at four o'clock in the morning. Um, so I opened the window, waited for him to get his vehicle, said, hi mate, happy new year. And he said, hello dad. And he came up and uh, to the bedroom and had a chat with me. Unfortunately, his phone rang and someone said, is there any chance of a lift? So he said, yeah, I'll pick you up. So he shouted up the stairs, dad, I'm just going out to pick someone up.
everyone had said he was on such good form all over mm. Christmas and all through December. That, I mean, I'm not saying there weren't things in the background, there were various little things which had happened over the last few months, silly little things, nothing that was major, but things, you don't know how things build up inside somebody and it just seems that, it's, well, we'll never know. It's like someone said to me, you know, you can talk to people, but also you've got to be aware of the own demons in your mind. And um, I think that is a major issue that it's all right talking to people, but you need to be aware actually what is in your mind. Yeah. yeah. We left the back door open of the house thinking he'd be back shortly. And Linda tried to get hold of Leonard just to check he was back. We couldn't get him. Um, the police were trying to get in touch with us because of the situation. Unfortunately, they couldn't get hold of us. Um, because the back door was open, they came in, uh, found my diary and looked through, and we got a phone call from, phone call through to the farmer we were scanning at, saying, please, could you get them to contact us? And the message we were re we received was, can you just get home as quickly as possible? So we knew something was wrong. Um, so we phoned someone else up who had, and said, what is going on? And they said, it's Leonard. So we knew something had happened to him. Um, and we were working over at Toaster. It was one heck of a drive back. And we came and met the police outside and I just said to them, I think you've got bad news for us. Basically, um, I'm quite a shy person and um, not um, that outgoing, although I've got a tremendous rapport with my scanning customers. Um, but I feel so strongly over this that I have mentioned I'd be prepared to talk to young farmers or Harper Adams students with the help of like FCN being present, just to say the implications and the effects of it's had on us um, yet again, just to try and make that difference. Yeah. But there's a song um, by Pink and Ragabone, mate, Anywhere Away From Here, and there's a classic line in that where um, it, where it stated, I overthink the obvious when I'm alone. And I think it can be just as powerful as that. And what I've found is when I'm scanning, I'm talking to people and it's an easier day. But if I'm on, on the farm all day, like a lot of farmers are, um, that's where being alone speaks volumes really. And you know, it show, shows the power of communication, really, yeah. We support farmers um, when they're going through tough times. And the farming community, as other people have said, is a really strong community. And they really do come together when things are tough. Basically, we, we're the support team. It's different to any other industry, as, as you know. We're long hours on our own. Farms these days are much bigger than they used to be. The typical family farm is not always there. And people are working on their own, you know, for days and days on end. And it's, we all know it's tough, just difficult. And it's, it's lonely a lot of the time. But the main thing is that the young farmers coming through now are learning to hopefully be more a part of talking to each other. And with um, FCN, we do something called Rural Plus, which we're running out into uh, young farmers clubs to teach them or help them come to terms with a lot of mental health stuff.
um, I think that's just so important. Very sadly, the, you know, Olen's funeral we did on, on the 14th wasn't the first farming suicide funeral I've done, and it's really difficult because there are so many unanswered questions and it's really hard to find the answers, if there ever are any. Often there's no words. I haven't got answers, I wish I did have. Sometimes you can't. There aren't the words, you've just got to be there. With FCN we don't push our faith on people, but people understand that because we've got a faith, that maybe we, we are trustworthy people who can help other people. And that's the main thing is confidentiality. And often farmers say to me in a joking way, uh, will you say a word because it's too wet? Or will you say a word because we need a bit of rain? Or, and, and they say it in a jokey way, but they, I think they do understand that because we've got some faith, it's important to us and it, we can hopefully support them through that faith. But we don't evangelise with FCN. We're not there to push our faith on people. We're there to walk the walk and walking alongside people can help an awful lot, even if you haven't got any words. I wish we did have the words, but we haven't. Mm -hmm.